Anyone for a cup of tea? No? Alright, well let's look at some open source intelligence then. But first I'm going to make a tea. Hang on. That's better. What's up guys? So today, I'm in a hotel room. Because I'm on a client site with work and it's currently half nine p.m. and I'm weird and I've brought my webcam and microphone to a hotel to make YouTube videos for you. Um, just thinking, the maid is probably gonna think I'm doing some weird stuff here because I leave this when I go out and she cleans the room and she's probably thinking weird things. Or maybe that's just me. Anyway, moving on. So this video today is about open source intelligence and what open source intelligence is, it's basically a gathering of information which you can query to find out things. So very easy example of this is using a search engine such as Google. Uh, you type things into it and it gives you a result. So that's uh, kind of open source, you know, because everyone, everyone has, that has a website is going to be indexed by Google if you allow it to. Um, so that's the open source side of it and you can gain information depending on what you query so uh, you know this has obviously become the very the basis of a lot of things of the world today you know kids google things to help with their homework um, software engineers look up code snippets for 60k a year and uh, yeah they make good money by googling things basically so um, anyway jumping straight into this uh, I've got a few examples of open source intelligence that I'd like to run through. So, the first one, we're just going to talk about Google hacking. I'm not going to talk about Shodan yet. So, Google hacking. There's a website called exploitdb.com and there's a section in it called the Google hacking database. Now, what Google hacking is, it's a load of terms that you can put into Google to find kind of juicy information. So, I'm going to pick one at random here. Um, here we go, let's go in text db password. So what this is going to do is it's going to hopefully Google in text, so inside of a document, db password, and it's also going to try and look for so this or, so it's going to look for db password or MySQL hostname, and the extension is going to be a dot text. So if we just cop onto Google now and put that in, we get a listing. So we can see this is obviously a Google hacking dork is what it's called for WordPress config files so some people have been silly enough to leave their config files in a text file so we're looking for text here that's a text file and inside that text file we're looking for DB password and MySQL hostname so if we go on the first result here straight away we can see that someone's left a password in the text file whether that's valid or not I don't know and it would be unethical of me to try it so I'm not gonna do that live um, go into the next one again another new password so this is Google hacking is a very very good way to find juicy information um, and this is all open source and arguably uh, arguably legal um, just don't do anything with it because that would be bad so that's Google hacking moving on We've got a website called Shodan. Now, you know, people have seen this, I'm sure of it, because, you know, it's it's very common these days, and it's it's a very cool tool. So the holiday, the holiday Inn I'm staying at is what we're going to use as kind of a, um, a learning tool here. So in Shodan, if I type in Holiday Inn, Shodan is going to give me a listing of load of IP addresses to do with the company Holiday Inn. So obviously you could put in Microsoft in there, Google, and you know this is going to give you a load of IP addresses related to Holiday Inn. So if I if I pick a a random one here, let's go to Mexico. You know this is going to give you this is the IP address. It's going to show you the services that um, is on this IP address, and it does it for does it for many of them. So you could go through all of these, and you can see what services are available oh that's going on the website see what services are available and you know if you want to be unethical you can be unethical but I don't recommend doing that um, 
I did actually look earlier at one of these, and one of these has a weird port on it. Not that, not back net. Well, that is a weird port, but that's not what we're looking at. One of them had it. See, I'm on really quite slow Holiday Express internet right now, so uh, apologies for that. Here we go. So there's an iKettle on this IP address. So this is a, a Holiday Inn IP address in Mexico. Um, and it's got an iKettle on the internet. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but the iKettle is actually vulnerable to various things. Oh, look, it's the iKettle on, on the register. Talking about boiling over because it leaks Wi-Fi passwords. Ah, uh, uh, that, that vulnerable kettle. I mean, this is another discussion. I, I don't know why uh, kettles need an app anyway, when you could just have something like this. What's wrong with what's wrong with a nice, crappy, non-app connected holiday in kettle? I mean, it, it made my tea in about twenty minutes, but you know, it, it does the job. You don't need a crappy eye kettle that's vulnerable to whatever. <sighs> but anyway, going back to Shodan. Shodan's a really cool tool. Shows you lots of ports without you having to do an nmap scan yourself of these IP addresses um, so it kind of takes a little bit of the kind of legal side away from you um, so you can find out what ports are open on what IP addresses without possibly getting into kind of a legal talk about scanning things that you might not be allowed to do um, and that's why it's a cool tool but not only this, you can you can see a lot of things on here. Shodan even supports um, um, what's it called? Uh, the, the, the name, industrial control systems. That's what it's called. So you can look at kind of industrial control systems like Siemens and um, other manufacturers that control like water plants and electricity grids and things like that. You can see that on Shodan. Um, it has it all here, so you can just explore these and see them and their ports. Databases, you can find databases on the internet. Video game hosting IP addresses, you can search for all that on Shodan. It's a, it's a open source intelligence queryable kind of IP address database. It's, it's a really cool tool. Uh, you can search by port, so let's search for something stupid like Telnet. Lo and behold, there is many Telnets. Don't know how many. One over one million just in China, Telnet. And you can you can almost guarantee that some of them are going to have a default part. Well, not some of them. Probably a good a hundred thousand or more are going to have a default password on that, which is just shocking. But that's been a quick intro to Shodan. Moving on, other op other open source intelligence frameworks. Facebook. You know, Facebook is a great example of what you can find out from people. If you've got an email address from someone, say, uh, I don't know, you've, you've gone on to the Holiday Inn Express um, LinkedIn, uh, someone that has a LinkedIn for Holiday Express, you found their email address and you want to see a bit more about them, you can actually go on Facebook, just log out, go to Forgot Your Account, and if you actually type in that, type in that, um, email address into this field here and search it their account might come up so this is my account this is a fake account obviously I'm not Aaron Aronson but um, you, their account actually comes up there and then you can look at that if they're not you know if their privacy settings aren't that great um, and find out various information like you know whereabouts they live what they do for hobbies their likes um, who their friends are potentially family there's Facebook's a very dangerous place if you don't have good privacy settings and you know you can just find that out from an email address. Twitter is kind of the same. Um, so if we search for the the exact phrase of uh, my there you go I've already typed it my number is 07 you'll actually find some people have put their number on here so here we go it kind of talks to me on WhatsApp my number is 07 blah 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 that might be fake but you know maybe not uh, again, my number. 
my number, my number, my number. Let's find a real one. There will be someone in here. There you go. Hi, my name is Maurice. Can I get help on PIM recovery? My number is that. So there you go. A guy called Maurice, he's given his phone number out. Just another piece of open source intelligence that could potentially lead you to, you know, dox someone or just do whatever you want to do using open source intelligence. Peoplefinder192.com. You can actually find where people live here. So I'm going to go for a surname of Johnson. And I'm going to go in Oxford. You've got loads of people here with the surname of Johnson. Now, if you want to find a specific person, obviously you're going to know their first name probably. So let's go Geraldine Ann Johnson. If you want to find this person out, if you sign up to this website, you can actually see their exact address on here. This, this map kind of gives you a little insight there. So you can see these people and exactly where they live, how old they are. You know, it's very quite scary, actually. You, if you want to find a phone number of this person, you might want to... So I'm just going to take a Lucy Johnson here. You might want to go to the BT phone book and just, just type in Johnson. And we'll go Oxford again. And if one of these people haven't set their phone number to X directory, you've got their phone numbers here. So that's an A Johnson, B Johnson. Okay. If you go to L Johnson, that might be Lucy Johnson from 192.com that you're trying to stalk potentially. You know, there's this. It's a dangerous world. You really need to think about your privacy, um, your personal privacy, definitely. You don't want your number on BT's phone book. You don't w want yourself indexed on from the electoral roll on 192.com. Image searches. Tin Eye is a cool website. You can actually upload a photo to it, and it will do a image search. So it's kind of like Google, but for images. So if we pick a, a photo here, this is um, a South Park screenshot of a YouTube video. So if I put that in there, it's now uploading and it's also searching for where um, where this photo might have come from. And here we have two hits on a YouTube video. You blew it. You had it on and you blew it. So that's where the photo came from. You know, this this could be used to find fake accounts on Facebook. Maybe someone's trying to catfish you. Maybe you've just got a uh, a stalker, someone that's pestering you. You can take their photo, pop it in here, and it might find you the real account, the real person. Moving on again. Where are we going now? The Harvester, another cool tool. So this has been around for, man, it's been around for years. But it's still a really, really cool tool for social engineering. Um, and open source intelligence altogether. So, IHG.com, that's Holiday Inns, and we're using them as target at the moment. So, what this does, the harvester D, that's the domain, dash B, that's the uh, the search, uh, search query, what we're querying. So, we're querying LinkedIn at the moment. If we do that, that's going to give you a load of people that have things to do with Holiday Inn in their LinkedIn bio which you can then use to potentially do a social engineering attack. So you could do, for example, Nick Rich. If you know the Holiday Inn email format, you could take that and do a phishing email to Nick Rich. So you know the email format's probably going to be something like nick.rich at ighh.com, or ihg, I think it is, .com, um, and try and gain his password and do whatever you want with it. So not only this, LinkedIn, you've also got Google search for the domain IHG. And that comes up with a staging website. So that's actually the kind of the beta of their actual website. So you know you might be able to find fake discounts on rooms on that or whatever that might be. You might be able to find vulnerabilities in this staging.com so you get a free night. Uh, not only Google, you can also go with Bing.
And I didn't find anything. But that's because it's Bing. Yep, yeah, that's, that's because it's Bing. No one likes Bing. So all this has kind of been uh, an introduction to open source intelligence. Um, and just to recap here, you can find ports from IP addresses from Holiday Inn. You can find phone numbers on Twitter. You can find accounts from email addresses. You can find people, their addresses, actual physical addresses from 192.com. You can find their phone number on a BT phone book. Image search. You can possibly find a Facebook page just from this. Google hacking. You can find passwords and other vulnerabilities just by typing into Google some terms. And if you want to know more about these websites and you want to kind of look further on from what I'm showing you here, there's actually a really cool website called onstframework.com and it gives you loads of websites to do various things. What's my name.com. So that's probably something to do with finding out who someone is. Loads of things on here. So this is in the bio of my uh, video below. Go check it out. Go go do some open source intelligence. It's really cool. But yeah, I hope this has been informative for you guys. Peace out from the hotel room. <laughs>